see the, 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 the gentleman was diligently packing all the stuff that was ordered, and this was a pretty order. That could be said as workshops. That could be said as a workshop as well. Yeah. As well, that's why the guy behind him is laughing. Right. Yeah. Um, so, so, so this, so e-commerce is a slightly different challenge. Right? Yeah. So the challenge is that during Christmas and other such peaks, mm -hmm. um, e-commerce companies have to hire uh, four times as many people as they have. Right. Right. And so that is now, if you look at the labor force. Yeah. And you look at the CBO data, the labor force growth that we are seeing in this country is about quarter of a percent right now. Right. right? So you can only imagine how difficult it is to hire these people, right? Arrange for a parking lot big enough for these guys to park their car, right. which by the way is a real problem. Right. Uh, train these guys mm -hmm. only to lay these guys off of their house. Okay, <laughs> <months, right? laughs> yeah. I mean how un how unproductive can we be? Right. And, and the question is, why can't robotics solve this problem, right? So we talked about the future of work. Why not robotics? Right. Now, robotics has two challenges, and we talk about the solution to those two challenges in a second. But two challenges. First challenge is robots, uh, when you think of robots, right, you think of these hard linkings, right? These metal, metallic pieces. Right. Um, and, and those pieces, typically, robots are not the safest things to be around. Right. Right. So safety is something that still, especially till the collaborative robot, robots came around, mm -hmm. safety was a, is a, has been a concern. Because they're just too strong and hard and there's things that could happen. That's right. And right. they move right. fast, we're not careful, we can get hurt. Sharp edges. Sharp edges and we don't want to get hurt. No. That won't get hurt. Right. 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 So, um, and the second challenge is how robots work, right? So right. For those of us who know robotics, mm -hmm. the robots really need three things. Traditional robots need three things. First is you need a comprehensive vision system. Right. So this morning when you just talked, we heard about the comprehensive vision system, right? Mm -hmm. Two is uh, you need to have think through the plan, the, the, the path plan. So how are we going to pick whatever we need to pick, right? So that's the path has to be thought through. Mm -hmm. And third is probably the most difficult part, which right. is the grasping. Okay. So you need quite a bit of uh, programming work, you need quite a bit of uh, deep com human, uh, human computation, right. numerical computation to do these steps two and three. It just makes it so difficult, which is why if you look at robotics, and um, there's some pictures shown this morning, most robotics that we see mm -hmm. are in automotive and electronics, right? Yeah. And why those two industries? Because for robots to do these three things right, mm -hmm. you want a structured environment, right. and you want things to be as uniform as possible. So assembly line is kind of... That's exactly yeah. right. So it is like yeah. uh, the elf here who's packing this big shopping list yeah. uh, that my wife put in, yeah. are different, right? <laughs> Uh, strawberries, same story, right? So, yeah. uh, and if you look at the industries that are really growing fast today, the fastest growing industries are food, packaging, and e-commerce. Yeah. All of these industries are industries that have to continue to be labor intensive mm -hmm. because traditional robotics don't work. Right. right? Yep. So that's uh, so that with that let's let's look that at what's the problem. Now you've got a solution. That's right. So um, this so is my coffee. That's your coffee. Okay. You're not going to drink that. So uh, so what we have done is. Um, the first thing is if you if you look at the gripper, right? Oh. Yeah. So this is a soft. Yeah, it's a nice soft gripper. So oh, you can yeah, like, get it soft There you go. There you go. Yeah. 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 And uh, it can. Ah. Work. <laughs> oh, that's actually not too bad. Not too bad. Yeah, right? react. We did it again. Oh, yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. It's so you can shake hands. Yeah. Now yeah. change your fist and then yeah, make it this way. So you see so that? Fix, fix around it. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So what does? Notice that my hands big. Wow, let's do that. Two fingers. Yeah. Oh, it's got it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So so you know when he does that two finger kind of like fishy shake? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's me. So, what this means is, yeah. so what we saw is you change your shapes, right? Yeah. You have put yeah. your hand. Yes. And with the change of your shape, uh, your hand shape, mm -hmm. all the steps we talked about, yeah. path planning, grasp planning, all of that's gone. Did it instantaneously? Like, it did it instantaneously. Like, exactly. Is there, like, is there like an eyeball somewhere? Or, There's okay. nothing like okay. right? Yeah. So, so the question is, how did we yeah. do this? So, the the genesis of this idea was uh, mm -hmm. out of uh, George Whiteside's lab at Harvard, right. where um, where he came out. His, he like paper, right? It came out with like that's right. Paper or something. That's right. So so he came up with this thought process that look, we can put more computation on the computation, mm -hmm. which is basically uh, add more computation analysis to solve the problem, mm -hmm. or we can just throw that away and just completely disrupt the robotics world, mm -hmm. or rather transform the robotics world by right. coming up with a material science solution. Which basically doesn't require any additional programming. Right. It doesn't require any additional path planning. All that's out. You right. don't need to do any of that. Everything is here in the material. That's amazing. Right. right. So this is uh, 
But this is a uh, polymer, as you can see, it's nice and soft, right? Um, and uh, it uses, it's got microfluidic channels in it. Mm -hmm. And that's what uses it to grasp different things. So you can grasp a banana, there you, go. you can grasp this guy, mm -hmm. you can grasp a... Uh, Water balloon. Or is this a balloon? This is just air balloon. Wow, it doesn't pop the balloon. That's right. Wow, that's a right? balloon. So, right so it can do lots of interesting things yeah. like that. I've right? got some fun things. Can we do some other things? Sure. I, I was just thinking about what would be fun. Actually, you can take a life over there. Right, yeah. <laughs> you already did that. Um, let's see. Let's see if this was filled. I was kind of going to fill it with hot coffee. Can we that up? Is that too, too big? So that for this group of my little. Oh, so let's take it. Yeah. 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 So with that, why don't we why don't we roll the video okay. while you're getting other stuff? Right, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So let's roll the first video. Roll the video. I've got some more fun stuff. Great. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll do that. Now let's look at this video. Right? So, so this is what we call a blind to object. Yeah. Or very, very difficult to take because really? the shapes are different. Uh -huh. The sizes are different. Mm -hmm. And every apple is unique. That was like the first thing I thought of was the, oh, that's too easy. But it's actually the heart. It is the heart oh, okay. because every apple is different, right? Oh, okay. And, as, and it's, it needs a deft handling, right? right? So we showed this video mm -hmm. to a major food manufacturer, okay. uh, one of the largest food man, uh, bakery manufacturers. And yeah. was like, what about the program? And mm -hmm. this actually doesn't need any program, right? So to take a step further, uh, what we did is just brought a bunch of random stuff, right? Yeah. There's fiddle, right. you have fake rosin, right. you have all kind of stuff, right? We have this fiber energy drink, we have, we're going to pick up this cowbell. Cowbell. Okay, so we have to do that. Yeah, yeah. so we have, a few other things. we have all sorts of stuff, yeah. right? So we have soft toys, exactly. it's yeah. really kind of, this is an ADB oh, yeah. industrial yeah. robot, right? Yeah. There you go, yeah. We have an ADB industrial robot, yeah. Yeah. and it's picking that, um, and it's very, very confident without yeah. any uh, struggles per se, okay. right? Yeah. So what that means is that, um, so we can pick this hat up, maybe? Yeah, we could do that. I just want to pick things up. <laughs> yeah. In fact, we'll let you pick it up. Okay. Right? Oh, I, I, I can obviously do that. So yeah. Can you do a draw up? Sure. Okay. What's that? Alright, so. Just hold it in the back. Just hold it in the back. Yeah, so this is like a real robot, right? Alright. Oh, sweet. That's good. And then. Okay, I got one more, actually. This is a good one. Maybe this will stop me. I'm going to put Keaton's in my pocket. Got some marshmallows. Okay. <laughs> they were from the. They were right out there a minute ago. I don't know. Go for it. These are like small ones. Go for it. Small ones. Go for it. 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 Go for and a good pick. They're good with coffee too. And it's really good with coffee. Do you want to pick your coffee too? Oh yeah, well this one's got coffee in it. Oh yeah, it's good. Yeah, it's dangerous. Alright. <laughs> Alright, ready? Yeah. Uh-oh. Don't do it. Uh, uh, Alright. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Should we do it? Yeah. Uh, I'm literally like a poor robot. There you go. Yeah. Okay. So so as you see, right? So what this means is. Now you open a whole set of, uh, there's a compressor by the way, yeah. which is called an ultra quiet compressor. Um, so, <laughs> so what this means is this is opens a whole set of industries that uh, where you're actually seeing the most amount of growth. Whole set of industries where you can actually now uh, yeah, fix. Talk, right? talk about, so where do you, like what's the most unique? Applications? Yeah. So we have a wide variety of applications to it. It's, uh, so you can pick eggs. Right. We have applications eggs. that, yep. The problem we have been uh, we have the in fact the world's eggs. It's like one of my favorite things, but yeah. I didn't have any in my pocket. Yeah, you could have one. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> would have been a little challenging. Yeah, that would have been, been a little more challenging. Right. Really and then we have the world's largest retail uh, pizza maker. Uh, they're using our product. In fact, they're using this guy. Pizza maker. Okay. Yeah, so they're using they to pick up uh, dough. Oh, just the dough and put yeah. it down. And, right. Okay. Right. They sure. don't even have a meter. Like a, doesn't do it. No, this is something. Okay. Just picking. Just picking, right? So, so a lot of wide variety of applications. Back in the next thing. The quick thing, right? In fact, in fact, other things we could also pick up is if you look at rocks, yeah. rocks right? Oh, those are heavier. So the thing with rocks is, yeah. where do you think the center of gravity for this? Is? Center of mass. Where do you think it is? Yeah. Anybody ideas? Middle. Bottom. Middle. Middle. Bottom. Bottom. Rock. Wait. 
Five. Right. Bottom, right? right. But if, if, you, if you move it to the side, now it's the right? So it's constantly moving. Right. Oh, right? I'm seeing so I was looking for. So the point is, the bottom line is you don't, right. you don't know, neither do I. Right. Right. So none of us know what that is. You're trying to stop it. That's exactly what I'm trying to do. Yeah. What are you trying to do with your coffee? You're trying to do with your coffee. Got it. <laughs> so the question is, so with something like this, yeah. you can pick it up quite well. Wow. Right? Well, they're, they're heavy, but let's just be honest. That was a still a really well done pickup. Right? So yeah. we can pick it up yeah. quite well. Yep. Yeah. And this can have, this could be a potential thing that an e commerce company would buy. Right. Because right? you buy, I mean, if you want to buy rocks, what are you going to do? That's right. Yeah. So with that, what if we roll the next video? And yeah. uh, so now that we saw the grasping problem, yeah. uh, we thought let's make it a little bit more interesting, right? Mm -hmm. So we have something that we call a super pick or a human in the loop picking. And let's look at a real world situation where, remember, if you remember the card, yep. picking was not 2D, picking was 3D. Right. Right? So, so here, as you can see, the gripper is going in there, it's picking the spiky ball, yep. it's uh, picking different types of stuff, going at different heights, so it's picking mm -hmm. across 3D yep. in a fairly easy, right? Yeah. So that means when you look at real world applications in e commerce, for example, mm -hmm. or logistics companies can get very interesting. Yep. The other piece is uh, human in the loop, right? So what human in the loop means mm -hmm. is that we can actually look at training the robot. So with every pick, yeah. the robot can actually be, it's exactly that, it can learn. And so we put in machine learning, and what you saw on the, on the left side, the hands, this is yeah. one of our so engineers. That question is just like saying, get this one, is this width? Kind That's of? exactly right. Wow. And when he's doing that, he's teaching the robot. Okay. So the robot is picking and learning at the same right. time. And if you think about this, it's actually a pretty difficult item to pick because it's a bunch of carriage. Yeah. What's this plastic the robot's name? Is it like... So this is an industrial robot. Uh, this is a Fianek uh, industrial robot. Okay. This can... Uh, the, our products can work with any robot. Okay. We don't actually name them. Uh, no, this is a industrial like robot. Or like, or no, <laughs> no, not yet. Okay. Not yet. I'm just thinking that I would name it. Yeah. Like, maybe that would like old yeller. Yeah. Oh. yeah. <laughs> Those are the two that probably guys wouldn't have. Okay. So, um, oh, we have a name. No, no, no. Yeah, we don't have that one. Sorry. It definitely doesn't have the name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, so this is sometimes a whole set of new applications, yeah. right? So yeah. now here we have what the robot is doing is it's, oh, it's, it's picking tomatoes off, off, the the head, off the line. Yeah. Right? So we were talking about future of work this morning, right? Right. So this just changes the whole world, how right. person on the world, right? So instead right. of taking people to work, right. there's an opportunity to take work to the people. Right. So the person who's operating the robot and teaching the robot at the same time doesn't even, in fact, have to be in the same room. Right. They can be in this air-conditioned room, right. sitting somewhere else. They could be here in San Francisco, mm -hmm. while the picking is happening in wow. somewhere else, wow. right? It could be happening in, uh, I don't know, uh, say, in, in Mexico. Right? Right. Could be anywhere really in the world, right. um, and uh, this is completely democratized as well, right? So right. we were talking about how can we use technology to a democratize work, right. b how can we use technology to really improve the quality of people's lives, right. and here's that what that's exactly what we're doing. Yeah. Is this somebody now is uh, is say uh, has some uh, physical challenges to work, right? Uh, has disabilities? They can actually pick. I mean, that's right. Because they could be sitting and exactly. They could be anywhere. They could be anywhere. That's amazing. So, uh, so this has enormous implications right. uh, for a lot of e-commerce companies. As a matter of fact, we are piloting this product with uh, one of the largest retail e-commerce companies right now. Um, Which one? Um, I'm sorry. I, don't know that. <laughs> I thought you missed it. I'm like, oh, let's talk about that. Okay. So they're actually piloting it. Yeah. And why this is interesting for them is one person can operate up to three robots. Mm -hmm. And tomorrow, as learning happens, one person can, op can operate say, 10 to 15 robots mm -hmm. to pick. Now, we remember we talked about needing to quadruple the workforce to handle seasonal demands? Right. You don't have to do that anymore. Right. Because what's happening is you use the robot, you use the machine learning which, which our product right. comes with, to precisely and pick the high speed. Right, and these robots don't really need to get like, let go or laid off after. Oh, they don't need to, you don't need that. Right, right, because you don't need to. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, one other thing. Um, so, we talked about the kind of future where things are going. Is there anything else, like, where, what's next on the roadmap for you guys? You, you, what's kind of the next big thing? So, the next big thing is we're really thinking about um, going to the next step in terms of picking, right? Right. So, we talked about grasping problems. So, we saw the grasping problems. Right, yeah. Uh, we talked about, in fact, we have the product in, uh, we've closed to billion picks so far. Wow, uh, back to the pick? Uh, yeah, so, uh, so. Uh, ticker that goes up? Kind of. 
So we keep uh, so we're getting a sense of the, the point is we need to make sure the, the technology is proven, right? So right. The technology is proven right now. Yeah. Uh, it can pick at high speeds up to 130 ticks per minute, so it can work at high precision, high ticks. Cool. We proved it with like things like pens, which work already high precision ticks. So that I should have brought a pen. That was a navy one, I thought, because it's a pen, but so if you put pins right next to each other, yeah, it's difficult to pick, right? Yeah. From a robot standpoint, yeah. okay. and it does that at high speed. So wow. that's not a problem. So, yeah. so, uh, so what's next is really bringing in machine learning on top of the right. uh, product, uh, really building out the super pick, yeah. uh, human in the loop, uh, um, uh, picking that the, the way we see it. In fact, what we believe is the future of robotics is solved, mm -hmm. because it's not a question of man versus robot anymore. It's a question of woman versus robot as well. It's a question of human beings and robots partnering together, yeah. working together uh, to become make the human almost superhuman so that they, we can achieve oh, yeah. even more I like and, and, and yeah. get to get uh, and get things to where we need to get to. In fact, we could also think about potential home applications. So for example, if you want to take things from a dishwasher. I would, yeah, I'd love that. So <laughs> a product like this would work, right? Yeah, because traditional yeah. robots cannot differentiate right. between a cup right. and a wine glass. Yeah. A dish, right? right? This one doesn't need to differentiate because the product is shaped like mustard. Okay, so real quick, I know we got to wrap up here in a second. Um, these are being used ad hoc, or ad hoc as you find new partners, so it's not like you can just go over and like buy one of these somewhere. It's not available, like out, unless you work directly, right? That's right. So, so robot, the way robotic innovation works, uh, implementation works, is yeah. customize the problem. Right. And you get both of them integrated in the Got it. So, it's not, so there's no specific like. Price point or anything like that. It's more no, like that. Uh, okay. In fact, we have multiple types of products. Like this yeah. one, for example, is yeah. food grade. Okay. So the this material is multiple medical grade material. Right. So and it's all yeah. yeah, and the, and Shiker. this is FDA. Uh, this is actually the it's shinier because it's stainless steel. Right. But on top of that, this is uh, this is FDA compliant uh, construction. Right. So what that means is it can uh, work in food applications in a sanitary environment. It can go through right. a harsh washdown. Uh, with no problem, you clean it up, and this can uh, you can actually maintain the, the strict uh, sanitary Standards, requirements yeah. that you need in standards you need to put. Great, that's amazing. Well, thank you so much. It's been a lot of fun. So it's been a lot of fun having you. Soft robotics, everyone. Let's hear it. Thank you. Aside, and we've got oh over there. Sorry to do that. All right, so our next demo is um, is from Mayfield Robotics. They're located not too far away in Redwood City, um, and I'd like to invite um, Kai to show the CTO of Mayfield Robotics here today. Uh, she's going to share with us her personal robot. But before I do, I want to show a little bit more about. Uh, she's basically been working in the robotics field for a long time. Um, she's a champion for robotics, uh, if, if you will, and she's basically designed robots for agricultural purposes, service robots, assistive robots for folks with disabilities, and now she's actually building a companion robot called Personal Robot. Pretty cool. I think this might be along the same lines as the original one I was working for. Um, that's my hope. Uh, so, anyway, again, coming out of MIT, uh, she's worked with Bosch as well as Willow, Willow Garage. Um, she's helped accelerate the growth and creation of, of robotics. Um, she's got a lot of accolades, and I'll kind of rattle through them really quick. One of the top 25 women in robotics you need to know, so you might meet her, maybe you know her. Uh, so just that's just a hint. Uh, and then also, she's Silicon Valley. Uh, Silicon Valley's Business Journal named her one of the most influential women. She's authored chapters and books about robotics. Uh, she's really pushed robotics forward. And today, she is going to share with us Curry. Which is right here. So let's hear it for Kaiju. She's going to take it away and, and kind of just, I'm not going to be as interactive as this, she's just going to run with it. So, okay. Yes. Uh, I'm just going to start with a video. Hey, I don't know how to explain it. I just played with a robot. I was playing with a little robot named Curry. K E R Y. I mean, I. It had a circle head, a little nourish body, and he looks like a snowman. Curry sounds like a little bit of a dog. Red dog, R2D2. It reminds me of a dog, a little puppy. He is very cute. For some reason, I understand this. Because I understand the robot. 
She's supposed to be a pet, a member of the family. But she does a lot of great technological things, and first I'm going to tell you about her personality, because we designed Curry personality first. We think it's really important to give robots a lifelike personality and lifelike behavior so that people can establish a strong emotional connection with their robots, and so that they can be very uncomfortable having a robot in their home, around them every day, because Curry is supposed to be a robot you have around every day, not a robot that you take home when you play with for you know, half an hour and then you get bored of her and put her in the closet somewhere. She has to be both something you want to have around every day and also earn her keep by doing something functional, something useful. And so we designed Curry with a personality that is humble, earnest, and curious. And from the start, we worked with a, uh, an animator who used to work with Pixar, his name is Doug Dooley, to establish how we would give Curry this adorable personality that people would want to be around. So Curry, we think, adds a spark of life to your home, and that's one of her primary purposes. She does the many other things I'll tell you about in a moment. So one question we often get is, why did we make Curry? And the reason is, we at Mayfield Robotics had, have what we like to call the robot dream. And that is that we always wanted to have robots in our home, like the ones that we saw in science fiction. Rosie the Robot from the Jetsons, or R2-D2, or Wally. And we're right now a long way away from having Rosie the Robot doing all of our chores in the home. We have robot vacuum cleaners, but it's going to be a while before we have Rosie. And that's okay. Uh, what we want to do is get one step closer to the future we always imagine. And we think Curry is that one step closer to the future robot. And today's home robots mostly fall into two categories. One is entertainment, so all the robot toys you see. And another is utility, so robot vacuum cleaners, for instance. Curry is in a whole new category of robots, home robots. And people can have curries and other home robots like her in their homes, and robots will become a normal thing. A whole generation of kids can grow up thinking that robots are a perfectly normal thing to grow up with and to have in their homes, and they can make the next generation of awesome home robots and get us to Rosie the Robot. So to make a robot like Curry that is personable and lifelike requires a whole lot of technology. And our consumers don't actually mostly care about the technology inside. They just care that she's an adorable robot character, as you see here. But it requires a lot of technology inside just to get to that point. So for instance, she has a capacitive type sensor in her head that allows her to know when we're petting her. And this is something that kids, right away, they come up and they just want to pet her, and adults too. And so it's important that she understands when you're touching her and how to react. She has a heart, like you can see here, that allows her to express her emotions. And so that will change different colors depending on whether she's sad or whether she's happy. She gets happier if you interact with her more, for instance. And she has gestural mechanics. So you can see that she's doing fan and tilt of her head and also blinking her eyelids. And these are all things that are important to having her express emotions and personality to make her a lifelike robot. Uh, she also has some very nice speakers on both sides. And that enables her to play music or podcasts or audiobooks wherever you want them in her house. Come around to wherever you want entertainment. And she has four microphones around her neck in a ring. That allows her not just to hear what you're saying to her, say, hey, Curry, and then she understands that as her ring word, and you can give her commands like that. But also, she knows what direction sounds came from. So when you say, hey, Curry, she can actually turn towards you and smile up at you. And in addition to these, we also have some features that I'd like to go in slightly more detail about. She has an HD camera, a laser sensor in the belly, and a sophisticated drive chain. So Curry has an HD camera behind her left eye. It sits right back here. 
you can actually see it from a distance. You have to actually come up to her and shine a flashlight to get in. And that's very intentional to kind of hide it in a way that you can't notice what the technology is. She just looks like she's an adorable character. That's what we call dot eyes. And this is actually a principle from animation, the idea that you have simple black dots that are eyes, and they change their shape, in this case with eyelids or with smiling cheeks, to show off that uh, she has different emotions. So things like, she greets you and she's happy to see you, and you can see her cheeks smile. Or if she's sad and confused, you can see her eyelids droop a little bit, like, oh, I'm so sad. And when we designed Curry, we actually initially thought we would put a screen in Curry, like many other robots do. And our animator actually asked for a screen so that he could animate eyes in all the different expressions for the eyes. But when we tried to hide the screen to make her really lifelike, we had a lot of difficulty doing so. And we also realized that even if we did put a screen on Curry, we would only ever want that screen to show eyes, because to show anything else on that screen breaks the character of the robot. It makes it very clear that those aren't actually her eyes. It's just a screen. And so if we were only going to show eyes on the screen, I thought, well, why not just give her physical eyes? That would be more lifelike than having eyes shown on the screen. And so we actually implemented that. So you can see she has some very nice, lifelike looking eyes. And another nice characteristic of these dot eyes is that from many different angles, if you're looking at Curry standing in front of her, it looks like she's looking at you. If you give her actual discrete pupils the way we have, you actually have to be very precise about the direction you're looking in in order to be looking at someone, or else you look like you're looking past them, which is not do anything to aid your lifelikeness. So we hid the camera back there, and the nice thing about having a camera is uh, you can do things like see through her eyes. So here's her app, and this is a, a show, showing the app showing what she's seeing. So what that enables you to do is something that's called telepresence. She can actually drive around your home, and she can see through her eyes and hear through her, through her microphones and talk through her speaker. And so, for instance, what our CEO, one of his favorite use cases, is being able to ask her a, to go to the living room, and she'll drive around her own because she has autonomous navigation. And he can look at the couch and see whether his dog is on the couch, because his dog's not supposed to be on the couch. <laughs> and if he is on the couch, he can take Curry's app and talk through Curry's app, and then in his voice, tell his dog, get off the couch. And she does actually get off the couch. So that's very useful. Um, <laughs> and hiding the camera behind the eyes, however, is actually something that was very challenging for us. We really didn't want to punch a hole in her industrial design, you know, her shell, to try to expose the camera so that she would have a very clear view, which a lot of robots do, but it bars her looks, and her looks and her industrial design are a big part of what makes her lifelike and compelling. And so um, we actually put the camera behind what is essentially a, a tinted sunglasses film. It's like wearing sunglasses. But in order to have really compelling pictures and video, despite having sunglasses in front of your camera, even in low light, that was a very challenging technological task. So we had to find an imager that was excessively sensitive, even in, with sunglasses in front of them, in very low light. So another challenge that we had was enabling Curry to map her home and navigate around it robustly. People have homes, homes are difficult to navigate robustly because homes are full of all sorts of crazy things. So we decided we wanted to use laser-based navigation. It's one of the more robust ways to do this. And the problem is there weren't any good off-the-shelf sensors that we could just buy and put in the robot at a consumer price point. It's very difficult. And so we had to actually create our own custom depth sensor. And that took a lot of effort, more effort than I thought it was going to take. But we managed to succeed in doing it. And I'm proud to say that we now have our own very custom depth sensor inside Curry that allows her to map and navigate around her home. And finally, her drivetrain is another component that we spend a lot of time on. And that's because Curry driving around your house has to be able to get over all sorts of thresholds and carpets in your home. And we explored all sorts of different types of drivetrains to enable her to do that. So one of the things we explored initially was the idea of having four, four drive wheels. It was what we call a tank drive, where the right wheels are linked and the left wheels are linked. But the problem with that, even though it was able to very robustly get over all the thresholds of the carpets in your home as if they weren't even there, which is fantastic. And we were able to map and navigate successfully with them. But the problem is, when she turns in place, all four wheels have to slide against the ground. And so she does this kind of hopping motion, which was really not acceptable from a user point of view. So the user point of view is very, very important to us, as I've told you. And so it's not just a technological thing, it's also a user thing. So we had to ditch that drivetrain entirely, and now she has a design that's a lot closer to some of the drivetrains you see in some of your robot vacuum cleaners. She has suspended drive wheels on left and right, and casters front and back. But 
our robot is a lot heavier than a lot of those vacuum cleaning robots, so it's more difficult for her to get over thresholds with the same sorts of drive tension you see in those robots. And so her drive wheels down here are actually designed with tank treads. So they have little treads that move, and the front edge of them, you can see, is actually angled such, such that when she approaches a threshold, it actually has a shallow angle attack. It hits the threshold with an angle that allows her to just drive over it the way a tank does. So just like a tank you see in front, like the front edge is, is slanted like that. And so she drives over thresholds in your, in your home a lot like a little tank does, and it, it works quite well. And another aspect of the drivetrain that was important was making it as quiet as possible. Because early in our user testing, what we discovered was that users complained a lot if the robot was loud at all. So unlike a vacuum cleaning robot, which if the drivetrain is loud, well, it's vacuuming anyway, you can't really hear it, that's okay. Uh, if Curry is wandering around your home or you're trying to relax in your living room and not be bothered, then it's really, really irritating to have a robot that's loud driving around you. And so we had to make her as quiet as possible. And another thing that you may note about Curry that is distinctive is she does not speak in a human voice. She speaks in robot beats and flutes. And you probably can't hear it, but uh, she makes a cute little repeating noise. These are adorable sounds that sound kind of like R2-D2 or BB-8. They're robot noises. They have human intonation, so you can understand what she means. But it's none of, it is never the case that she speaks in a human voice. And that is very intentional. It sets expectations appropriately. So that you expect that she has intelligence maybe more like your dog. She's like a pet robot. She's not meant to be a personal assistant. She's not your butler. She's not meant to be able to carry on a two-way conversation with you. So the most common question we get, now that I've told you all about the technological features she has, is what does Curry do? And I've mentioned one of her features already, where you can drive her around your house and check up on your pets and your loved ones. But the main feature that she has, which is enabled by her ability to autonomously map and navigate your home, and also to understand in the pictures that she's seeing out of her camera, what she's looking at. So she, she does pet and person detection using deep learning algorithms. So she knows what she's looking at. And what that all enables is what we call curry vision. And curry vision means that curry is your family's videographer and photographer. She can drive around your house on her own, and she knows what she's looking at her family, and if her family is doing interesting things, then she can get capture moments. So short videos and pictures to show you later on what was going on in her house. So this is kind of what that looks like. She drives up and she sees her family, her family is doing something interesting. So she captures a video, and then later she uses machine learning and computer vision techniques to filter out down to just the most interesting moments, and then she'll show those to you so you can see them later. And we like to say that Curie captures all the moments she thinks. And what that looks like is you can actually be in the picture too. You may not have missed the moment in that you were in the moment, but you may miss it in that you have to be behind a camera in order to capture it. And here you don't have to. So Curry will capture it for you. You can be in the picture with your kids when you would not otherwise be able to be. But also, kids, for instance, behave very differently around grown-ups and their parents especially than they would around each other or their friends. And kids, as you saw in that first video, they automatically see Curry, see Curry as a, a friendly buddy. They like to pet her. They like to be around her. She's a friend. She's not a grown-up. And so she can capture pictures that grown-ups can't capture if they're there with the camera but they just might be hemming it up. And she can capture more candid photos. And of course, Curry is also an entertainer. So I mentioned that through her speakers, you can play all sorts of music or podcasts or audiobooks. And one of my favorite aspects of her is that she will actually dance to music that you can play through her speakers. So first of all, She's actually doing beat detection and dancing differently to whatever song you play through her. And it's one of my favorite things to do, to play different songs through Curry to see how she reacts to different songs. And so just to wrap up, we talked about robot personality and how important it is for consumers to trust when they accept a robot in their homes. And we feel that this is a thing that has been left out of many of the robots that people have been trying to introduce into people's homes. But it's why people respond so well to fictional robots like Rosie or R2-D2 or Wally. And so we think it's key to make robots that are lifelike and personality filled so that people will want to adopt them into their homes and have them around them at all times in an ongoing basis and not just a utility thing they show up in their closet when they don't want to use it. So just to talk very briefly about the future. We are still a long way away from Rosie the robot. People are working on it, and I think we will get there. But we're a ways away, and that's OK. Robots in homes are just getting started as a category. There are many other companies like ours who are making home robots of all different varieties. 
And they're all working in different ways to explore how robots can be helpful in the home and how robots can be accepted in the home. And it's great. We cheer them all on. We want robots to succeed in the home, not just ours, but theirs as well, so that we have the robot revolution someday. And we're just getting started. There are so many other applications for robotics in the home that haven't even been explored yet. And as people become more comfortable with robot, robots, like Curry, robots will become normal. So kids, they see Curry, and 30 seconds later, they're already talking about how they want to be roboticists someday and make robots like this to do awesome things. Because Curry is a normal thing. Curry is not some educational toy. She's not some science fiction thing that's not real. She's a robot. She's here. She lives in their homes. That's normal. That's OK. They can do this too. And so we think personality is key, again, to getting all manner of robots accepted in the home and everyday life. So I talked about what we made, Curry the Robot, what we made it to make the whole robot dream real, how we made it with all the technology inside Curry. And we're looking forward to bringing Curry into the homes of people around the world who have dreamed of having their own personal robot just like we have. Curry starts shipping in December. Thank you for joining me today. I'm available afterwards if you have any questions or if you want to learn more. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. All right, one more time. Let's hear it for Curry.